Hey guys, Andy here. So I'm not a massive action cam user, um, but at the same time, I've got a motorbike, I go cycling, I go go-karting now and then. I like to have an action cam to hand. Um, I also hope that I could use it in kind of my video production, what I'm doing, um, because I've been looking to go to 4K. So the camera I'm filming at the moment, this Lumix, that can do 4K, and I bought a Logitech Brio webcam, which can do 4K. What I didn't realize was the bitrate of the webcam is so low, it's like 2000. Um, it just, to me, the image actually looks really bad and it's a little embarrassing in some ways. So I'm thinking, what are my options for replacement? And I thought an action cam might be a bad idea. Definitely they can do 4K, good quality video. Um, but I hadn't really counted on the wide angle factor. Uh, and it just fits, this, to me, it's just too, I have to actually get quite close to the, to the camera for it to look a normal shot like this one does. Um, I did do a video using it and it, it kind of worked, but I don't know, it's perhaps not the answer for me. Um, I very nearly bought the GoPro 7 Black about I don't know, a month ago. I was, I was, I think I was literally on the site, finger on the on the buy button, and I didn't at that point, whatever reason it was. And then it was literally a couple of days later, DJI emailed me about their new action cam. Um, I went to YouTube, saw a couple of videos about it, was really interested straight away and thought you know what let's give this a try uh, one of the things that really intrigued me was the front facing screen so it was actually ideal for filming this kind of stuff because you can see yourself and check that the framing is all right and you're not too high or too low or, you know. so uh so i thought yeah let's go so i bought one um and here we are so let's first of all just have a look at through the sort of the, the unboxing i suppose and what you get in the box the first thing you notice actually is how small the box is. I'm used to GoPros, which are, I mean, huge big boxes. Um, some information on the back, 4K 60p. I mean, I think it means 60 frames per second. I'm not quite sure. Am I missing something? 60p, is that a thing? I thought it was 1080p, 720p, 60p? Anyway, um, so let's get inside the box. And it opens frontwards. And here we see the device. Um, with a bit of sort of extra padding to, to sort of protect the lens, I suppose. The first thing you notice when you do take the uh, action cam out is just the weight of it. It really is. It feels a very solid. It's, it's got some weight to it. Let's just put it that way. Um, the case feels pretty good as well. It's nicely designed. I can tell you it sort of opens and closes quite nice and easily. The only thing in the box is a little another box of accessories. The first thing is a little soft touch bag with a uh, USB type C charger which is nice to see I mean I guess you know it really should if you're buying top-end devices in this day and age and then the little sort of screw thing that helps you attach the case onto other devices other devices other mounts sorry such as the sort of curved sticky pad mount that we see here they've basically bought their own kind of quick release when I worked out how it worked um, it works quite well so in theory, you can stick the mounts on various different things and you can just use a quick release to switch it back and forth. There's a flat base, a circular one, which again, you'll see hopefully that it's quite simple and quick to switch from one to another, which is very good. Um, what else do we got? Oh, we've got the battery in the box, of course, in its nice little carry case, which I think is kind of cool. There's even a little space to clip in a memory card inside the battery carry case. Can you see that on the top? Now the battery basically forms part of the device's case, so it's not like there's a flap or a cover or anything to to remove. You just slot the battery in, and you're ready to go. So uh, it's already started powering itself up. We we'll remove all the protective bits and pieces, and it's telling me, "All right, you want to get the app installed." Um, there is just one other thing to see, I suppose, in the box. There is the in very rather thick instruction manual, but that's because it's all in different languages. I've not actually read any of that at this point. I don't think there's anything we don't know already. So we've got a we've got a power button on the top and a record button, and then on the side there's a quick switch button, and there is also a little flap covering up the USB Type C uh, memory card. So I put in my memory card, which I had. I'm fairly sure I'd been using in my GoPro Four, and it told me no, it's not quick enough. I'm sure it was Class Ten as well. Anyway, I ordered a top top of the top speed card. Um, I then got the app installed. I went via the Play Store in the end rather than downloading their APK just to make sure I had the most up to date. Connecting the device the first time seemed fairly simple. I do have problems connecting it afterwards, but uh, you just kind of reset Wi Fi and then connect. The only reason I wanted to get it connected was to get the update done, to be honest. 
So I think it's a really well designed product, including the case. So you'll see there's a space there, I'll show you why in a second. You've got all the buttons easily findable through the case. I believe that's venting on the front to help with the cooling. Um, there is a like a pass-through light at the top there. When you're recording, you can see it flashing through the case. And as I mentioned, it's pretty simple to get it out of the case. So just to show why there's that gap, this is where the charging port is and the micro SD card is. And this side will actually just pull off. So you can put that back in the case and you have access through the case. You can buy these flaps from DJI because I'm sure people are gonna, people are gonna lose them. There we go. So let's now power it on and show you a little bit through, yeah, it can be quite noisy, a little bit through the interface. It's quite simple. I do like the sort of, it's easy to navigate. We've basically got, we swipe in from the different sides. So the top one brings me my options in, things like brightness, locking the screen, uh, actual settings here. So we can turn on voice control. We'll come to that in a moment. Snapshot, this is what happens if you press the record button when the device is off. Uh, you can set it to come out to any of the things that you like. Uh, quick switch look. This is where, so you can save profiles and then set them to be in the quick switch button. So I guess I'll need to show you that at this point. When I press quick switch, it comes up with, and I move through to whatever I want, leave it, and then that's what's now selected. And again, if I press it in, we start at the beginning again. So you can set up the first one I've got there, look, is an HDR profile. The second one is a 4K 60 frames per second, which is generally what I use. Um, we'll come to how you set those up. Voice commands are off at the moment, but you can turn them on. Uh, turn them back off again, there we go. What else have we got? These are the profiles here. And actually, I don't know that I want that anymore, but uh, I'll leave it there. Um, so that's from the top. In from the side is kind of your video settings. So we're on, uh, we're on photo settings at the moment, but I can go to video. You can do things like deep warp. So if I turn it off, you get a slightly wider angle, but you get that funny fisheye warping. Turn it on, you still get a little bit of the fisheye warping, but not much, and you get a slight crop. But it can do that in 4K, which I think is quite impressive. So I think it's got a massive big sensor, so that probably for the electronic Im image stabilization as well, but that's what lets you do the uh, Cine like so there's a few different settings there auto white white so that's that's from the right swipe from below is where we get sort of the uh, resolutions and frames per second and also rocksteady so every every now and then rocksteady is not available in certain formats and certain frames per second aren't available in certain formats so if we go to HDR so HDR is now on, we don't get rock steady, we don't get any more than 30 frames per second, which is quite a shame because HDR obviously is a feature that you want, but it really limits your, uh, kind of the performance, I suppose, in some ways. We'll come to rock steady shortly as well. And then from the side is actually just anything you filmed already. Can be watched back. So that's it really, it's, it's quite a nice, simple, um, system. If we double tap that, well, it comes around to the front facing screen. There is a bit of a delay. Actually, that seems to have, maybe they've improvised. No, I've not had a software update. Anyway, um, I found the double tap. I mean, it seems to be working perfectly now. But there have been times where I've been stood tapping it for I don't know how long. But don't fear, because you can just hold down the quick switch and it will switch it around for you. So it's about time to actually use the thing, show you some footage. So here it is attached to my bar. You'll notice obviously it's been raining and you didn't worry because the uh, the action cam is waterproof to 11 meters, which is not huge, but at the same time, that's plenty of sort of swimming pools and things like that. Not that I really do much swimming. Um, but the first thing I wanna show you is the Rocksteady, the electronic image uh, stabilization. So I've attached it here to my handlebars of my bike. It's just sat ticking over, but you can see there's quite a bit of vibration. It's rocking all over the place. 
but then I'm going to switch it to rock steady turned on. Now you might notice the crop there, but actually how steady is that image? That is ridiculous. I can't, almost can't believe it. Um, so then we're now, this is just regular cycling that like you've just seen a bit of, but what I want to point out is that Wahoo, uh, the cycle computer just to the left, that's fixed in place. The camera on the handlebars are fixed in place. That Wahoo unit shouldn't really be moving on the screen, but you'll notice it's rocking all over the place because that's the electronic Im image stabilization at work. That's it sort of fighting. It uses a bigger, bigger image and it keeps kind of moving the image that it's using, if that makes sense, within the bigger image to give us a steady view. But that makes the Wahoo look like it's moving around the place. Likewise, here the, the camera's stuck to the windscreen, but look how much the car's moving. They're, they're moving at the same time. The camera is moving at the same time as the car, but because of the image stabilization is moving the image around within the overall image, it looks like the car is moving. And it really gives you a good idea of, of what it's doing. Then I'm going to give you a moment to, uh, to listen to the mic and see how it sounds. And this is an example of the microphone. It has a cycling uphill, but actually, surprisingly, it still sounds reasonable. Uh, if I had any energy to actually talk. I think that's not bad. I mean, it's not sort of necessarily vlogging quality. Um, and I'm hoping there's some kind of third party integration for third party mics. I believe the Osmo Pocket allows that through the USB Type C. So hopefully they'll do that for the Action Cam. But as it stands, it's not too bad. You know, for things like the motorbike engine and just general uh, ambient noise that is to be captured with the Action Cam, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's too bad. Um, the battery, I found to actually be really good, so I've done a couple of quite large rides and it's recorded about an hour and ten minutes before it finally gave up. I think that's pretty good, I mean, most of my GoPros, to be fair I've not had a GoPro since the GoPro 4, but they never seem to last more than kind of 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So an hour and ten, I think I'll probably just get maybe one second spare battery and after that I'm not sure I'll need much else. Because that's, that's, I would say that's quite impressive. Um, the voice controls, I didn't I didn't come back to voice controls, but I mean effectively you can just say things like start filming or take a photo or um, I forget there's one that makes you swap to the front the front screen on the camera. Um, and and it, they seem to work quite well. I mean even when I was cycling I could I could sort of say commands at it, uh, including sort of shut down and things like that and it would then it turn itself off. So yeah, they I mean it's not something that I've used, but maybe if that's something you do, then they seem to work quite well. I've not really mentioned yet the uh, video quality, I guess because you, well, you can see it really. Um, now this is a clip using HDR. It does look fantastic, the colors are nice and strong and um, vivid, but as I mentioned earlier, you cannot have Rocksteady, and I think that, I think it just discounts it as an action camera. Now maybe you're going to use it like I was thinking uh, mounted on a, something stationary and you're literally just filming with it uh, in which case yeah the HDR probably really good but as an actual action camera I think it just rules the HDR out which is a bit of a shame um, the other option you've got is to take photos I've not really mentioned just yet either uh, the photos generally they looked okay obviously you've got to bear in mind you're, you, you're doing wide angle you've got no choice on that um, but they looked reasonably good images maybe slightly well, I don't want to say washed out that that probably doesn't really do them justice but there's no HDR mode for the photographs so the colors just aren't as strong as I might expect them to be they don't quite pop like I might hope them to but at the same time they are still pretty good uh, photos but again I wouldn't be using it as a camera like I wouldn't take it on holiday with me to take my holiday snaps um, but they do it does they are sufficiently uh, good photos so overall I really love this camera I really like it it's 
Very good. I kind of, I almost bought the Osmo Pocket because I like it being on a gimbal. And if the Osmo Pocket had a front facing screen, I probably would have already. But at the same time, the action camera, they are different. The action camera is for sticking on a bike or on your car or whatever. And the, and the Osmo is more for vlogging and just walking around and talking to it. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I do like the Osmo action. The build quality, I think, is fantastic. Really, really good. Just such a solid device. Everything feels like quality. Um, the interface is simple and effective. The battery life is, I would say, is pretty immense. Rocksteady is almost unbelievable. I mean, you would think that it's being filmed from a gimbal all the time. Uh, the video quality is fantastic. The only thing missing, really, is a quarter inch mount uh, on the actual base of the device. So you could like directly screw it onto tripods or other mounts. Uh, and instead, you have to use the case. And you'd love to have Rocksteady and 60 frames per second in HDR. I think I think that's the only way they can improve. I mean, for their first offering as an action camera, I think it's really, really good. Um, I don't know, how, how, else, how are they going to improve for the second one? I guess maybe just the mounting point and an HDR. I don't actually mention the price, so I paid, what did I pay? Three twenty nine from Curry's. Um, there didn't seem to be any sort of offers or anything at this point. It is quite new, obviously. Um, fun enough, GoPro are offering kind of a hundred pound off if you trade in an old camera. But I was, I was by that point, I was really set on buying the DJI Osmo Action. So there we go. I think that's uh, that's all I can say about it. It's really impressive. Let me know your thoughts though in the comments down below. But for now, my name's Andy, and I'll catch you all again soon. Well done and thank you for making it to the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, you might want to click the little fellow that should hopefully appear about here to subscribe. Um, you may also want to check out some of my other videos which are going to appear somewhere there. Um, also, come and have a look at my website, androidandy.uk. Um, there is also a forum. Come and say hello on the forum if you've got any questions about things or requests for me to review things or anything else. Just come and have a chat on the forum.